Hi, my name is Mpatamali. Welcome to Dundee here in Cape Town, South Africa. You will agree with me for they who use English mainly to communicate as a language. Once in a while, we do use different words that mean something else to emphasize context. An example, I cannot imagine I'm watching this. If I were to take those two words, cannot imagine and apply them literally they would probably be fitting to this story in this video where i can assure you by telling you you really cannot imagine the pain that a real parent has to endure by losing a child through a violent crime and that is the case of francisca blachliger South Africa is a country, as a nation, has different regions, provinces, other parts of the world. This might be an equivalent of a state here in Cape Town, South Africa. It falls under the Western Cape province. This is where you find Table Mountain, the wine regions, and a lot of other attractions that visitors would come to experience. There's a very uh, popular nature reserve called Tokai Park or Tokai Forest, where you know residents around Tokai, that town itself, and other people probably passing by will top over, go walk their dogs, go a little bit for a run, and so on and so forth. So Tokai in itself is where Francisca Blachliger came from, 16 year old, you know, lucky enough to come from a loving family of four. So mom, dad, and a younger sister. So she was heading to Switzerland in a short while. This is going back to 2016. So on a specific day, 7th of March, they were going to pick up their younger sister. And uh, they got there a little bit earlier. Let's go to the park, kill some time until they're done. Then we can go and pick up your little sister. And they had their dog as well into the, in the vehicle. Mom decides to go you know, walk the dog. Francisca was not really feeling it. She was quite of more into fitness, the health living, health lifestyle. She decided to go for a quick jog, pushing a little bit of exercise, and then they decided to meet half an hour later. So they arrived at the park around 3 p.m. on this specific day. So they split ways, mom went that direction, walking the dog, and Francisca went on, oh, get that fitness in, running and she went. Half an hour later, the time that they agreed to meet at the entrance so that they could proceed go pick up their little sister, Francisca wasn't there. She was nowhere to be seen. This agitated the mom. She proceeded to call husband, father. The dad was like, oh, listen, don't worry. What you could do is just dash down quickly to the school, get the younger sister because it won't be appropriate her waiting outside by herself. Then you can drive back to the park and I'm sure Francisca would be done by then waiting for you guys at the park. Well, splendid. They did exactly that. As you've guessed by now, there was no sign of Francisca anywhere. Worrisome as it is, they started asking around, calling, standing over, you know, elevated places, yelling, Francisca, 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 where are you? It's getting more and more later. Sooner or later, phone calls here and there, dad arrives, this search continues, people come around, um, you know, there was even a whole committee that usually is experienced with missing persons, especially the young ones and things like this in Tokai. They came out with their yellow vests, everyone spread out, let's look for this young girl. It was uh, Tokai forest, you know, more of a spread out, area so it's not something that you would just quickly walk and find someone and eventually later the course of the day a lady who was walking her dog more or less found francesca but unfortunately she found francesca's body 16 year old francesca who had so much to live for francesca who was going for an exchange program going to see the world who was a future leader perhaps Francisca was dead. Her body was found in the Tokai forest in the southern peninsula. Flowers and messages of support lined the fence. The family says they are struggling to come to terms with what happened. When they found my daughter, I was not allowed to go close to the scene. They said it's a crime scene and I'm not allowed to go close. They said they called a chopper. Uh, it gave me the instinct that, that, that things will be fine. Half an hour later, I was told that my daughter has passed away. Our messages that we were offering a big reward for the arrest and the conviction of the person who will find or hear anything that we can arrest that person that did that to our daughter.
So what really happened? Well, she was robbed of everything. They found her, you know, her hands were bound together. And um, she had been sexually... <sighs> yeah. They had nothing to go on or just start from, but they, they did know that there was foul play here. She had an iPhone and they traced it. There was a neighboring informal settlement that was very close by. And this is where mostly the workers that would work uh, in the farms, the wine farms that were neighboring Tokai and Constantia, mostly reside in this informal settlement. And that's where they were able to trace the phone. So this individual who is a complete waste of flesh. This Howard Oliver. Howard Oliver you know, strikes me to be more of an aristocratic kind of a name. Well, not that much, but more of a, you know, upper kind of a name. A gentleman in his 20s, a drug addict, history of crime, of course, uh, was walking down in the park on that specific day. He was a father as well, became a dad at a very young age, I was married, had two daughters. A troubled life, uh, going back to him on this specific day, 7th of March, he's walking around the park and sees this girl walking, running around with her iPhone, obviously on the side, earphones in it, just getting her fitness, young girl, and it hits him, I can overpower this young girl, and that's exactly what he did. Went and mugged her, got, tried to get the phone, but she resisted a little bit, so obviously there was a scuffle. He was afraid, and he pulled her through to the bushes. If something happened, maybe she hit her head or she passed out. And so he proceeded to, you know, go and put her on the side. And he was scared that she would wake up and start screaming, probably bring attention to her. So what he did is he took shoelaces from her shoes, bound her, laid her on her stomach, took her clothes off. I don't need to explain the rest because it's unbearable, but yeah, he did that. She basically suffocated to death while he did his deeds. He went back to life, normal life as he knew it by then. Later on, when he was arrested, due to guilt, he decided to confess and he gave so much detail, it was unbearable in court. So obviously he got two life sentences, but still, the deeds were done and they will never bring Francesca back. Yeah, so do you think you can really imagine the pain that some parents go through? More information about Francesca's case, definitely if you Google, you'll find. I'll leave a link to where I got some of the um, information from. And if there's anything you'd like to ask me more regarding the case or there's something else, definitely, you know what to do. Just comment and your likes so would really be appreciated. Once again, thank you very much. All the way here from Cape Town, South Africa. I will see you in the next video.